straighten up and fly right maneuver where the spacecraft will jettison the entry balance masses in preparation for parachute deploy and to roll over to give the radar a better look at the ground. Applicate in the cage, shoot deploy. The navigation has confirmed that the parachute has deployed and we are seeing significant deceleration in the velocity. Our current velocity is 440 meters per second at an altitude of about 12 kilometers from the surface of Mars. Heat shield set. Perseverance has now slowed to subsonic speeds and the heat shield has been separated. This allows both the radar and the cameras to get their first look at the surface. Current velocity is 145 meters per second and an altitude of about 10 kilom nine and a half kilometers above the surface. Nav filter converge. Velocity solution 3.3 meters per second. Altitude 7.4 kilometers. Now has radar lock on the ground. Current velocity is about 100 meters per second. 6.6 .6 kilometers of the surface. Perseverance is continuing to descend on the parachute. We are coming up on the initialization of terrain relative navigation and subsequently the priming of the landing engines. Our current velocity is about 90 meters per second at an altitude of 4.2 kilometers. OVS valid. We have confirmation that the lander vision system has produced a valid solution and part of terrain relative navigation. Priming. TBA is nominal. We have priming of the landing engines. Back shell set. Current velocity is 83 meters per second at about 2.6 kilometers from the surface of Mars. We have confirmation that the back shell has separated. We are currently performing the divert maneuver. Current velocity is about 75 meters per second at an altitude of about a kilometer off the surface of Mars. Here in safety, Bravo. We have completed our terrain relative navigation. Current speed is about 30 meters per second, altitude of about 300 meters off the surface of Mars. We have started our constant velocity accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane, about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. Sky crane maneuver has started, about 20 meters off the surface. Getting signals from MRO. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. A reminder for some of you uh, exactly what are the sensors that we included in the entry, descent, and landing camera system. Things go really fast here. You can see that uh, you can get a sense really of how violent that parachute deploy and inflation are. Uh, the parachute pack, it's, the parachute is, is packed so densely that the uh, pack is basically the same density as oak, um, and it's about 150 pounds. It gets launched out of the spacecraft uh, with a mortar, which is basically a cannon, uh, with a muzzle velocity of around 100 miles an hour. And the spacecraft itself was going about 1,000 miles an hour at this point, uh, going about 1.75 times the speed of sound. So just in case you blink, let's show you that one more time. You can kind of see that in, uh, in high speed and then or real time, and then we'll slow it down and take a look at the details. Okay, so let's try to walk through this a bit slower, uh, this time at about a quarter speed, and we'll pause at times to point out things we see. So let's start that rolling. Okay, here you can see the pack getting pushed out of there. Uh, you can kind of see the pack right in the middle uh, as it's being pushed, uh, and the, uh, the, the parachute lid, which is right on top of it, it's kind of that circle to the left of the pack, uh, was on top of the pack. Um, it, was, it was there to protect the parachute during entry. It's got some thermal protection system material on it uh, to keep the parachute nice and cool and protected. Uh, and the pack is used to push that lid right off the vehicle, uh, given that cannon force. You can also see some of the other uh, things that have popped off of that lid, uh, which is kind of expected given how violent this, uh, this launch really is. Uh, so let's move on from here. So we keep going out here, you can see the pack reach what we call line stretch. So that's as far as it's gonna go. It's uh, where the parachute's gonna start inflating. 
Um, that's about 150 feet behind the spacecraft, and it got there in just under one second. So this pack is really moving. Um, that's pretty much, uh, as the parachute starts to come out, you can see the pack is rotated about 90 degrees. That's pretty common. Uh, we've seen that in, uh, in some of our testing here on Earth at high altitude as well. Uh, so let's keep going and take a look at the inflation. So that inflation really looks textbook. Uh, it's nice and symmetric. Uh, the parachute opens in only about seven-tenths of a second, again, really fast. Um, there's no evidence of tangling of the lines, which is great. Um, that's, uh, there's about two miles of lines in the parachute system. If we start that up, you can see the heat shield falling away very nicely and symmetrically. Uh, pausing here, we can take a look at what we see on the, on the heat shield. Uh, we can see that the heat shield basically stays in the same orientation as it uh, flies away from us. It'll come back into view in a little bit. Um, but this is, uh, this is great. This is kind of what we expected in terms of the aerodynamics of that heat shield. It doesn't tumble or do something weird uh, that was unexpected in flight. Um, so that's very useful to have this video to show us that. Um, so in the interest of time, let's skip ahead uh, to about 15 seconds before back shell separation. Uh, so starting this video here, you can see that the uh, spacecraft is rocking back and forth while hanging under the parachute. Uh, this, this rocking is less than it was earlier in flight, but uh, pretty much what we expect. There, that white flash was back shell separation, and you can see us throttle up and begin our divert maneuver. You can see the vehicle's turned over, so we're actually beginning to fly east. Uh, and that's why you can see the, uh, the delta over there. Um, as, it, as it maneuvers eastward to the eventual landing site, it actually passes over, the field of view will pass over the landing site and then kind of overshoot it a little bit because it's got to stop that horizontal divert that we did. Uh, you can see everything's nice and smooth now that the engines are under control, that uh, on-sheet parachute rocking is gone. So here we are, uh, slowing down and stopping, and we're coming straight down on our eventual landing site here. Uh, you can see that uh, as, we, as we really begin to slow down here, you can see the engines as we get lower uh, throttle up there and, uh, and stop us here. And you can see it beginning to push all that dust around on the ground uh, on the two sides. That shaking there is the rover deploying and the mobility during a sky crane. And uh, here we are coming down, and that, that uh, rocking motion of the, of the rover, we'll see in other videos. Uh, but that settles down right before we hit the ground in a nice, safe, flat spot. Uh, there doesn't appear to be too much of concern that's right below us. Uh, so here we go. Uh, the rover begins to drop away from the descent stage, and that's the first, the first part of mobility deployed. You can kind of see here as, right before we pause that the uh, mobility kind of shook a little bit in that, uh, in that first deployment. Uh, here you can see the, uh, the bridles that are hanging down from the top of the picture. Those are what's supporting the weight of the rover below the descent stage. And if you look down toward the left, uh, the bottom part of the image and toward the left, you can see that gold umbilical. That's uh, what's transferring all the information between the rover and the descent stage, including this video. Uh, this picture is coming down uh, from the camera up on the descent stage down to the rover through that cord, uh, in addition to other information that's going back and forth. Um, so as we uh, keep going here, you can see the bogey deploy. That's uh, on both sides of the mobility back. You see those wheels, the back two wheels on either side swing down. That caused a little bit of rocking of the rover as expected, but you can kind of see that kind of settles out a little bit uh, right as we enter that, that, uh, that plume and dust cloud. Uh, um, you can see the descent stage as the rover begins to fall away from it uh, and see the effect of that rover wobble from the mobility deploy. Uh, you'll see the image begin to wobble a little bit here. I can promise you it's not the descent stage wobbling, it's actually that rover tipping back and forth a little bit as we saw as the mobility deploys, both the first initial mobility deploy and then the, the, uh, the bogeys uh, deploying. Um, as we near touchdown, let's slow it down a bit and uh, proceed in slow-mo here. Um, so now we're watching about quarter speed. Things are getting pretty dusty here as we get down, down toward the bottom. Uh, take a look here at the bottom left of this picture. Um, you'll see actually the instant that we cut the descent stage away. Uh, and you'll see those bridles begin to get retracted up toward that descent stage as they're pulled up. And this is as planned. There they go. See as they got uh, yanked up there uh, right before. And then we'll see the uh, descent stage begin to turn and ascend and head out uh, toward the northwest with the uh, umbilical dangling behind it. Um, so, and, um, these cameras represent a pretty significant advancement over um, previous imaging systems that we've flown. These are 20 megapixel color cameras with very high resolution and wide angle lenses um, that we use to basically map out the surface as the rover drives, and then we use these images to do planning and things. And so we, um, the first thing we did after we deployed the mass is we started imaging the surface. So the next slide uh, shows one of our first images from the cameras. Uh, this image is actually in low resolution mode. Uh, so it's one quarter of the full resolution of the, of the camera. So it's been, it's been shrunk down. Uh, but you can see right there the vista that we're seeing. This is uh, the rover, obviously, on Mars, and you can see some of the material that landed on the deck. Uh, but everything looks in, in good shape, and so we're using these images to inspect 
not only the vehicle, but uh, the surface around us. Uh, the next slide shows the view down towards the surface. You can see the wheels there. Um, this is the same surface you just saw in the EDL cam videos. You can see some of the scouring that the uh, rocket plumes did for us, clean it off, make it nice and clean so we can take pictures of it and dust it off for us. Um, the next slide shows a view looking out towards the south um, and this, just an amazing scene here. Uh, this is it, this is Mars. We're, we're here in our place that we're gonna be exploring over the next uh, months and coming years. And it's just really exciting to see, um, you know, these scenes look familiar to us. You know, they look Earth-like in a sense. You know, you see the, the mountains back there and the rocks and things. It's just, uh, it really is the surface of an alien world and uh, we just arrived. You can also see some more scouring there over on the right. Uh, the next image looks over towards the west. You can see the delta up, out there in the horizon. And again, more scouring from the, uh, the rocket plumes. Uh, and then we take all of these images and we uh, stitch them together into panoramas. And so that next, uh, the next frame shows the full panorama from the NavCam uh, stitched together. We're still working out the calibration and things. So this is, uh, you know, approximate color, um, but it just gives you a feel for the vista here that we, we're, uh, our new environment that we're going to explore. Uh, and we're hoping uh, everyone will join us uh, in um, Seeing these images, we're, uh, today we're going to be releasing a whole slew of raw images. Um, it's been a fire hose of data, basically. We have thousands of images already. As you'll see in this NavCam frame, we start with what may seem like very basic observations, light rocks, dark rocks, holy rocks, that's holy with an E. Uh, we use these very generic terms at this early stage until we have more data that allow us to test our hypotheses uh, and make more confident interpretations. Follow along with the mission and you'll see that this is a theme. As we get closer, our view of Mars continues to resolve and a coherent story emerges. Next image, please. Finally, I just wanna briefly point out that we are finding real science value in these EDL cam videos. Here you can see a beautiful new perspective on the Jezero Delta. And if we can get the next image, also, a new perspective on some of the beautiful stratigraphy around our landing site, which is, is up near uh, uh, on the far right side of this image. Uh, so now to put all of this in context for us, I'll hand it over to Dr. Tom 